Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto becomes the host family for the Monster Girls, and God Harem, part 2. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Martial Anime, link is in the description. Also subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's begin the video. Click Naruto heard as his sleep heavy eyes slowly opened. Huh, oh I was having such a wonderful dream, to the blonde heard directly to his side. That sounds like Hikari. Naruto thought. Well, the lovebirds finally wake up he heard Naomi say, now seeing her with a camera. What are you? Naruto asked before noticing Midori looking at him happily. And to his left, Hikari was still trying to sleep while using him as a pillow. Quick question, why am I sleeping on the couch with Hikari? Naruto asked, which woke Hikari up. Wait, what? The blonde fox shouted as she bolted upright, sporting a massive blush. A few minutes later, Naruto is making breakfast for his guests and housemates once they wake up. After Naruto explained to the girls why Midori called him dad, he was sure he'd die last night. The blonde overfed Naomi, Hikari, and Midori a place to sleep since it was late. The small group stayed up late talking in the living room, and apparently Naruto and Hikari fell asleep sitting next to each other. On the bright side, Mia and the others went to sleep before that happened Naruto thought as he set the table. Just as he called everyone to come eat, at this point even Mia was awake. The phone rang. I got it. The blonde said as he went to the phone in the hallway. What do you mean? You want me to look after an extra species girl for the day? Naruto asked Ms. Smith over the phone. Exactly what it sounds like. I'd have someone else do it, but we kinda have to take care of a hostage situation. Involving orcs at a dojin store, the woman told him. Look, I don't want to know what's going on. And I don't want to do your job for you Naruto was telling her when he heard from the kitchen darling. What is the meaning of this picture? So, where am I meeting her? Naruto happily asked Ms. Smith. Meeting location. So Mike really needs to start doing her job better. Naruto said as he waited next to a water fountain. So are you the one they got to watch me? Someone said from behind him. Once he turned around he saw a girl with short black hair, golden eyes, green scales, and a long white trench coat. Depends are you Draco? Asked them. Just great. Not only do they send a human to watch me, but a human man. Is this some kind of joke? Draco complained. Well this is off to a great start Naruto thought sarcastically. How can you say you hate me? We just met, Naruto said as the two sat in an outside portion of a restraint. Because you're just a weak human man, what else do I need to know? Draco argued. I don't know, how about anything? Naruto said. The two had spent the last half hour going back and forth like this, and Naruto was getting tired of it. Like I said, I don't need to know anything else to know I don't Draco was saying before Naruto cut her off Oiroke no. When the cloud cleared Draco's mouth nearly hit the floor. There, happy. Now can we at least try to get along for one day? Naruto, now in Naruko form, told the still stunned. What? Draco yelled pointing at the blonde you said you were human? I am human. I'm just different from other humans. Naruto explained, receiving a look from the girl clearly saying bullshit. I have a better explanation, but you just call me a liar if I told you Naruto told the girl already wishing he'd stayed home. Try me Draco said looking her in the eye. I'm from a parallel world where I was trained as a shinobi, Naruto told her. After a moment of silence what the hell kind of answer is that? Do you really expect me to believe that? Draco yelled. Told you you wouldn't believe me, the blonde said with a sigh as she leaned back in her chair. Okay let's go Naruto said getting up. Where do you go? Draco asked. Just because you don't like me, doesn't mean we can't have fun, Naruto said grabbing her hand and pulling her with her. Hey what are you? Draco asked with a small blush. What, you want to just sit here and argue all day? Naruto asked without stopping. Naruto's house. Where'd Naruto run off to? Naomi asked as she relaxed on the couch. Yes, I too would like to know where Master is cereal added. He's off running an errand for Ms. Smith Karama said as she watched Poppy, Sue, and Midori playing. How do you know? Mia asked, thinking that darling told her and no one else. Did you forget that I'm sealed inside of him? Unless Naruto actively tries to block access, I can eavesdrop on his thoughts whenever I want Kurama to inform everyone. Isn't that intruding on his privacy? Hikari asked. I only do it when I need to know where he is. And besides, he's never told me to stop Kurama. So where's dad now? Midori asked. He's at an arcade with a he's looking after the orange-haired fox answered. How thoughtful that our dear sir is helping Miss Smith and looking after this extra species person, Mero said deciding to add something to the conversation. Hi yeah right now that girl is wiping the floor with him in some fighting game. Karama mentioned reveling in the blonde's shitty luck in video games. He's with a girl? Alone? Mia nearly yelled. Yes and? Karama asked, followed by Naomi saying my, isn't someone jealous, but I can understand why. After all, when a guy and girl spend the day alone together, most would consider that a date, right? Date? Mia said. Calm down Mia, she's just trying to get a reaction out of you. 
Remember that Ms. Smith was the one that told him to Karama when to say but was interrupted by the household's pinket. Perhaps our dear sir will fall in love at first sight and forget about us in his new love. Oh, how wonderfully tragic, Mero said, envisioning her tragic fantasy. The mermaid's words were quickly followed by the room becoming a lot less crowded. God damn, this is your fault so you're going to help keep them out of trouble. Karama to Naomi as she headed for the door. I have no idea what you're talking about was the woman's sarcastic reply as she and her two housemates followed. With Naruto, you really suck at this, Draco said, beating the blonde for the 15th time in a row. Shut up, best out of 32, Naruto said with anime-style tears running down her face. I think I'll pass, Draco told her blonde companion. Hey blondie, how'd you get picked to watch me anyway? She asked to get up from the game. I guess it's because I'm used to this kind of thing. Naruto answered by getting up herself. So you already have to take care of an extra species person, Draco concluded. Actually it's six, but yeah Naruto said heading to a vending machine. Six, your parents must have their hands full, Draco said following the blonde. I don't have any parents, they died the day I was born, and I grew up an orphan. Naruto said as if she was talking about the weather. Oh sorry I brought it up Draco apologized feeling bad about saying it. Don't worry about it, I'm used to it by now, and it's not like I don't have friends to turn to when I need someone. The blonde said as what she ordered dropped in the vending machine. The blonde then took what it had and handed it to the coffee? Draco asked to take it. I thought it'd help warm you up, since it's a bit chilly in here and all the blonde said. Thanks to Draco putting the drink in her pocket to warm herself. So where are we going next? Draco asked as the two left the arcade. I figured you could pick since I already took us somewhere Naruto said. Don't you mean you dragged me there with you? They asked. Details Naruto said waving her hand dismissively. Fine, I guess I can think of somewhere to go. Draco told the blonde. One trip across town later. You know, I seem to come here a lot lately, Naruto said as the two walked along the lake inside the park. You're the one who wanted me to pick remember? Draco told her. I didn't say I hate it, just that I've been here a lot. I actually like coming to the park. I grew up in a village surrounded by a huge forest, so living in this big town feels a bit weird, Naruto said thinking of Kanoha. Then why did you move to this place? Draco asked surprisingly curious about her answer. After all what were the chances they'd stay in touch after today? I left to train, Naruto answered. Train? For what? Draco asked. To keep a promise I made, the blonde said as she thought about that day. It was here that everyone else showed up. Darling why are you spending the day with what happened? Mia said after noticed how Naruto looked. What are you guys doing here? Naruto asked. Mia became worried when she heard you'd be spending the day with another woman Syria explained. Oh that makes sense, Naruto calmly said. I take it you're used to this? Draco asked with a raised eyebrow. This kind of thing happens a lot Karama answered for him. Why are you all so calm? Darling's a girl. Mia yelled as Poppy, Sue, and Midori inspected Naruto to see how he did it. Surely you should be freaked out? Mia asked the centaur. True I was surprised when I master first transformed like this. But now it's just normal for our lives Syria said remembering the bath. First, the redhead said. Oh so you haven't seen this yet? He made it when he was a kid, Karama casually said. It was here that Mia passed out from the shock of the situation. Well we should get her back to the house Naruto said as she formed a few clones to carry the Lania. You really are used to this Draco said as she followed the blonde and everyone else. Later at the house. I see you enjoyed your day Ms. Smith said to Draco as everyone sat down to eat. Can't say it was horrible. They replied as Tio, an ogre, passed her the salt. Hey babe if you cook like this I just might have to eat here every night. Zambina, a zombie said. You know I don't have a problem with you girls coming over. But could you let me know before you visit next time? I almost didn't have enough food for everyone. Naruto said back to normal now. Shortly after they all got back to Naruto's house Ms. Smith showed up with the Amoan girls for dinner. If he thought he bought it it wasn't surprising at all. But still. We'll keep that in mind. Oh and Draco. We'll give you a ride to your home after dinner. So you don't need to worry about that. Ms. Smith told the girl getting a nod in return. Now for those of you who read the chapter, or just skip to this part here's the bonus I promised. This here was my original idea for chapter 5, but discarded it halfway through in favor of the one you've, hopefully, already read. I was going to have this chapter be the one to introduce Karama in her human form, as well as introduce Midori as a character. It would have been about Naruto and Karama helping the lost Midori find her mother and host family. Hope you enjoy this little behind the scenes look at my story writing process. In the park. Okay Aero Sanin, what are we doing today? Naruto asked the toad sage. Well first, you're gonna put some chakra in this, Jiraiya said, handing the blonde a small piece of paper. A piece of paper? Naruto flatly asked. Just shut up and do it, yeah Jiraiya told the boy. Fine, but this better be good and with that the blonde did as he was told. Master's teacher should learn how to behave with dignity. To think that such a perverted man is responsible for his training. It's a miracle that the master is as well behaved as he is. Syria commented as she, Mia, 
and Poppy sat under a tree enjoying the lunch they brought with them. You're just upset that he said your pious were huge, Mia told her. For that to be the first thing he said, and so bluntly at that, clearly the man has no dignity. Even you have some distance for him, Syria said subconsciously covering her chest at the memory. Sure, it is annoying, having him ruin the mood between me and Darling all the time. And sure, he's a pervert. I mean Darling doesn't call him Erosanin for nothing, but I guess I just got used to him. Not that I won't strangle him if he ever tried anything perverted around me, Mia told her. I think he's funny, Poppy said as she fished a sandwich out of the basket. Okay, I understand the whole leaf thing, but isn't this something that could be done at home? Why did you have to drag me all the way out here before telling me this? Naruto asked the man. That may be true, but I've noticed that. With the girls now living with you, you've had less time to train. At this point Jiraiya put his hand up to stop him from protesting. Which is why I've come up with a way to get you back on schedule. Hell, we might even get you ahead of schedule, Jiraiya told the blonde. Alright, now you're speaking my language. So what do I do first, Erosanin? A now excited blonde said. First, I want you to make a clone and have it take this back to the house. Jiraiya said, handing the blonde a small box, and Naruto replied with huh? Why? And what is it anyway? It's just something I picked up by accident when we left, and I don't want it to get damaged. And before you ask, no, I'm not going to tell you how to speed up your training until it's done. Stupid Erosanin, making me do something like this all of a sudden, clone Naruto said to himself, as he was rooftopping his way home. Why do you care for those girls? Kurama decided to ask as Naruto moved along. What do you mean? Why wouldn't I care about them? They're kind fun to hang out with, and dash not human Kurama said cutting him off. Why would that matter? Naruto instantly shot back. Humans can't even get along with each other most of the time, let alone a different species that's so. Well I don't know what kind of people you've met in the past, but I don't have any problem with someone being a different species, Naruto told the fox. Says the boy who demands my power whenever he wants Kurama argued. Oh I do not. I only rely on your power when nothing else works. If I had it my way I'd never need it. Naruto said as he dropped down to the street. Ha, don't make me laugh. You would be nothing without me. You know what? I was actually starting to enjoy our little chats recently. But now I rip you out of my life on the spot if I don't have to worry about dying. Naruto told off the fox sealed in him. For a few minutes afterward Naruto just stood there in silence. And then what if I told you there was a way to get me out without? I'd say you were pulling it out of your ass. Naruto flatly told the orange fox. Perhaps I've never tried it so there's no guarantee it'll work. Kurama admitted. I can't believe I'm even considering this. What's your idea then? Make a clone, and then let me control it, Kurama answered. That's it yes and with that Naruto formed another clone for the fox. Wait, what the hell am I doing? Huh? Darling caught a cold? Mia yelled after hearing the news. This is most likely due to his being exposed to the elements yesterday Sirius said as they looked at Naruto lying in bed. Are you okay, husband? Poppy asked. Don't worry, it's just a cold. I bet you it'll be gone by morning. Naruto reassured them through his stuffy nose. Well said, they only need to focus on healing your body, Syria said, and then Mia showed up in a nurse's outfit. Relax, darling, I'll nurse you back to health. It's cute, lay me and nurse Mia, Mia said, striking a cute pose. Okay, darling, you're getting sweaty, right? We should change you out of those clothes right away, Mia said with a perverted expression as she creeped closer to the blonde. How can you act like that at such a time? There's even a child present, Syria said motioning towards Midori who got dropped off at their house with her mother when Naomi had to go see her publisher. It was as the two were arguing that Ms. Smith crashed through the blinds window yelling that's enough. All of you, get out of this room. It's dangerous to be here, she said now standing in the room surrounded by broken glass. What the hell Samike? I have a door you know. Naruto yelled at the sunglasses wearing woman, only to have her point her gun at him yelling freeze. Mr. Darling, you can stay right there, later in a separate room. Okay, everyone calm down and listen up. We've set up a quarantine to protect you from catching Mr. Darling's illness, Ms. Smith announced. Chew quarantine? Syria asked, followed by Mia. What kind of disease has Darling contracted? Who was then followed by Hikari? I hope it isn't serious. Ah, to watch your dearly beloved suffer day after day, being eaten away by a disease. What tragedy? Mero dreamily said as she envisioned herself sitting next to Naruto during his final moments. Why are you happy about this, you tragedy freak? Mia yelled at the mermaid. It's just influenza, right? Ms. Smith asked. Much to everyone's surprise. So why are you quarantining us? Syria asked the obvious question. We must be cautious of the dangers of a viral mutation. Like the bird flu. Thanks to a sudden mutation, the bird flu was able to jump from birds to humans. That danger could exist here as well. If a new mutated virus were to be transmitted from humans to extra species, it could turn into a complete pandemic that could threaten the existence of all extra species. Ms. Smith dramatically said. But it's just a cold. That probably won't happen, Mia said. Then what should we do about our master? Syria asked. Relax, I'll nurse him in your stead. 
Ms. Smith told them, getting a collective Ms. Smith. As a result, man, I had piles of work to do today, but I've got to take extra precautions against disease. My colleagues are working hard on all the work I had to do, so I better step it up and do my best to help you out, Ms. Smith said. Ah, uh, she's nursing him as an excuse to skip work Mia and Syria thought. First, time for a cup of coffee, the woman said as she filled the coffee bitcher with water. What happened to nursing darling? Mia yelled, followed by Syria saying this is troubling. Ten minutes later, of course Mia Syria. And Mero thought as they looked at Ms. Smith sleeping in a chair. Looks like we'll have to nurse him back to health by ourselves after all. Mia said getting agreements from Poppy and Mero. Wait, wait. There is a grain of truth in what Master Smith has told us. It could be a serious matter if one of us were infected. Syria pointed out. But it would be so tragic, Mero said envisioning herself dying in Naruto's arms. It could get transmitted right back to him. So stay away from our master, Syria told the mermaid. So what should we do? Mia asked the blonde centaur. If only there were someone immune to such an infection, Syria said, only to have everyone look at Sue. Later, Syria had her head on the table as steam billowed out rambling. After she put Sue, transformed into Naruto, between her upias, my body temperature is low, Mia said angrily at being unable to heat up Naruto with her body, followed by Poppy saying Poppy's is high. Um everyone, in reality, this person is only Sue, so please calm down Mero said. It was here that the group heard a knock on the door. Excuse me but I heard Naruto caught a cold. Turning towards the door everyone saw the one who said it. In the doorway stood a young woman with short black hair, black eyes, and wore a dark colored kimono. Behind her stood a younger girl with short pink hair, green eyes, a red shirt, with a pink sweater tied around her waist covering her black shorts. Yes? But why are you here and who are you? Mia asked. Oh I'm sorry. We should have introduced ourselves. I'm Shizen and this here is Sakura. Lady Tsunade sent us when Jiraiya said Naruto caught a cold, Shizen said. So the Hokage actually sent someone to help out. Guess I shouldn't be that surprised Kurama said from her spot on the couch. Do they not do these two? Syria asked. The one talking is the Hokage's assistant. And Naruto's teammate Kurama said. So you work with dad? Midori asked the two medics. Dad? What do you mean? Sakura stuttered out. Well mom has a crush on dad. And since dad's going to get married to a bunch of girls, that means that mom will marry dad. Midori reasoned, bringing a blush to Hikari's face when she pointed out her crush. Considering you're Tsunade's apprentice, I assume you're aware of Naruto's Siari status? Kurama asked. I'm aware. I just didn't think there'd be so many Sakura said looking at the girls. Well I think it's nice that he's getting this kind of attention, Shizen said. Did you expect him to keep chasing after you after the hundred times you turned him down? Kurama asked, sorry for throwing you under the bus like this, but I deserve a little payback for all the injuries I had to heal because of you the fox then thought to herself. Wait, how would you know Sakura started to say, before Mia interrupted her. What do you mean? Are you saying that my darlings asked you out? Not only that, but you turned him down, Mia yelled. She's his childhood crush. Too bad she always punched him for asking her out, and then fanning over their other teammate Kurama said with a grin. What? Mia, Syria, and Poppy yelled. What? I can explain. She said, raising her hands in defense. Oh, our dear sir, to have such an unrequited love, only to see the one he loves chase another. How tragic. You simply must tell me about it. Mero gushed with stars in her eyes, as she grabbed her fellow Pinkett's hand. Well, I see you're busy, so I'll just go check on Naruto, Shizen said, leaving Sakura to deal with this mess. Wait, Shizen, don't leave me like this, Sakura said as she faced a tragedy-obsessed mermaid and three pissed extra species girls outside Naruto's room. Huh, who are you? Shizen asked to see Sue at the door, only to get no answer. Can't speak? Jiraiya did say something about one of the girls not being able to. Do you want to help me treat Naruto? Shizen asked, to which Sue nodded. Didn't say she'd help me? Naruto asked as he lay in bed. Master, I'm coming in, the blonde heard from the other side of the door. Syria? Didn't say no to Naruto was about to ask when Sue stepped into the room, followed by Shizen. So you can mimic voices, huh? Shizen said. Shizen? What are you doing here? Naruto asked the medic. Oh Lady Tsunade sent me to treat your cold, and the medic informed him. Really? Well it's good to see you anyway. No what are you doing here Sue? The blonde asked, turning his attention to the slime. We cannot approach you because of the risk of infection. However, Sue possesses a different biology, so there is no risk of infection. Thus, Sue will be nursing you today, Sue said in Syria's voice. That could really be useful when dealing with an unknown illness Shizen said to herself becoming more fascinated by Sue. Sue remembering what she'd been told then walked up to Naruto to check his temperature. Unfortunately she wound up getting his head stuck in her. Eek. Wait Sue you're drowning him. Shizen said right before Sue pulled back. Seems like it's about 42 degrees. Sue said. There's no way you're that accurate. Naruto said once he got some air in his lungs. Hello sir. How are you doing? I'll be helping you out next. Sue said in Mero's voice. Before leaving the room. Hey Shizen. 
You wouldn't happen to know what they taught her, would you? Naruto asked the medic. Sorry I got here after they must have taught her, Shizen admitted. Shortly after Sue came back in with a kid's pool and a small bag of herbs. I'm guessing she wants you to shake this, Shizen suggested. This water is freezing, Naruto said after getting in. After a few minutes the blonde asked so how long will this take? You should be fully cured within a week, Sue answered. Next treatment, was Naruto's response to that. Just as I thought, I can't count on any of you. It's my turn now, Sue said in Mia's voice. You need plenty of nutrients at a time like this, Sue said bringing out a sealed pot. I don't think that will help me. I'd rather not get a stomach pump, huh? Naruto started to say before seeing the pot was empty. Did you eat it already? The blonde asked, getting a nod from the girl. Well I guess it can't be helped, Naruto said patting her head. Why would you need a stomach pump, Shizen asked. All you need to know is never eat Mia's cooking, Naruto warned her. Okay, it's Poppy's turn last. Poppy's wings are really warm, so it'll feel great if you sleep in them, Sue said in Poppy's voice. That does sound good, but I have a bad feeling about this, Naruto said. So Sun's gonna sleep with you for me, Sue said before her voice started to sound like everyone arguing and her arms turned into some kind of wings mixed with tentacles. Eek. What is happening, Shizen asked followed by Naruto saying, that's what I want to know, as he tried to keep Sue from getting close. Sue, what are you doing? Naruto yelled as Sue wrapped herself around him. She's in help? The blonde shouted. I'm trying, but my arms keep going through her. The medic yelled. What the hell did everyone teach you? This is getting out of control, Naruto yelled. It was here that Sue stopped out of confusion and placed her slime tendril on the blonde's forehead and began to read his thoughts. Yesterday, Sue was taking shelter from the rain, unable to get home. There you are, Sue. I've been looking all over for you. Was the rain keeping you from going home? The blonde asked, running up to the girl with an umbrella. At her nod he handed her the umbrella. Here use this. I'm a lot more resilient than you when it comes to rain so don't worry. And try not to go out on your own anymore okay? I was worried about you, Naruto said as he started to walk back to the house with her. Present. Is someone giving me water? My throat feels a lot better, Naruto thought as he started to wake up to find Sue's tit in his mouth. What the? The blonde asked quickly backing up. Oh, I see you're finally awake. Sue here has been filtering water through your body for a couple hours now, Shizen said from a chair next to the bed. She has, my body does feel better. Thanks Sue, Naruto said, sitting up to pat her head. I think we should go check on the others. They must be worried, the blonde said, getting up and heading for the door. Once he unlocked the door however, it flung open letting Mia, Poppy, Siria, Midori, Mero, and Sakura fall into the room. What are you girls doing? Oh, hi Sakura, you came too? Naruto asked. They taught Sue a bunch of weird stuff so they wanted to stop her, but the door was locked. Karama explained from her spot in the hallway with Akari and Naomi. Don't go saying that, Mia said followed by Poppy saying. But it's true, there's nothing to worry about. In fact Sue helped me get better, Naruto said having Shizen agree with him. Really? Mia and Sakura asked. Sakura had been informed of what they taught her and how things normally end up around here by Karama. Good job, Sue. Poppy congratulated. Well, it was Sue's fault that you caught a cold. I should apologize as well. But Sue doesn't mind because she loves her master, Sue said with a smile, stunning everyone except Sakura. This resulted in most of the people there freaking out. Eventually it got to Mia shaking the girl as she asked, and what's this about loving him? What do you mean by that? Sue then mimicked her asking the same question. You talked on your own five seconds ago. Damn it, Mia yelled. As this was going on Sakura walked up to Naruto. Okay, how in the world do you put up with this? I'm exhausted after just one day of this, she asked her friend. Guess you just got used to it. How's everyone back home? Naruto said. Good. They're all looking forward to your visit. Though I wonder if Kanoha is ready for this, Sakura answered. Guess we'll just have to see what Naruto said as he saw that Miss Smith had somehow caught a cold despite sleeping all day. We found this note she left behind when fleeing Miss Smith said, handing Mia and Syria a piece of paper. Hey, this is. It's our address. Mia started and Syria finished. It could have been that so-called director who looked it up Ms. Smith said. That idiot again? Karama asked, remembering the scar she gave him for asking about her underwear. Yes the 110 call was from him. So Moen was dispatched to secure the premises. But Ms. Smith was saying when Karama cut her off, she escaped. HM, well, we still don't fully understand the situation yet. That man wasn't registered as her host family. So why did he have an extra species woman living with him? Ms. Smith said. But why would that extra species person have our address? Mero asked. I thought she heard that there were a lot of extra species girls living here and would try coming by. But I guess I was wrong, Ms. Smith said as she watched Poppy and Sue bring in groceries. By the way, where is Mr. Darling? Ms. Smith asked. He just went out to catch the sale at the supermarket before it closes. But he should be coming home any moment now. By the way, what are you two doing? Mia asked. There was a bunch of food just outside the house, so we're bringing it in. Poppy answered. Warehouse. How where? 
Naruto asked as he opened his eyes. Oh, right. Can't believe I knocked myself out by tripping. The blonde said seeing himself tied up, upside down with spider web. My, you're awake? I can't believe you knocked yourself out like that. I really do hate humans. I really do, a voice said. A voice that Naruto found out came from a woman with short white hair, six eyes, clothes that did very little to cover herself, and the lower body of a spider. Pleased to meet you. I am Rachnara Rachnara. I assume this is the first time you've seen an arachne? Fufu, are you scared? The woman asked. Considering you've only tied me up so far, no. Oh, and the names Naruto Uzumaki Naruto told her. Well, you're certainly trying to act casual. What? Are you so used to being kidnapped? Rachne asked, cutting the blonde down. Ugh, it's not the first time, and I doubt it will be the last either. Also, did you have to let me drop like that? Naruto said moving into a sitting position. So, how long does the tough guy act last? Why don't we find out? Rachne asked. It's not an act, and could you cover up a little? It's distracting, Naruto asked, turning his head away with a blush due to her nipples showing. My clothes are what's bothering you, Rachne asked. Maybe he does have some sense of justice, or perhaps I just have to dig a little deeper to make him show his true colors? Rachne thought as an image of her old host family entered her mind. Hmph, who cares about this exchange thing the Arachne said before hearing noise outside. Somebody called in and said they heard something in this old warehouse, but nobody was there. I wanna go home, an officer said as he shined a light around. Meanwhile, up in the rafters, Rachne was holding Naruto close to her body with his head between her upayas to keep him quiet. I finally escaped from that place, and I really don't want to be caught again, so I'll let you have your fun a while longer. I wouldn't want to capture something so pathetic. Anyways, Rachne said as she watched the man. If you want to get out of this alive, don't make a peep, alright? Rachne told the blonde before noticing something. Wait, did something just get a little harder? Rachne teased, pointing at the blonde's crouch. SH shut up, Naruto told her with a massive blush. Oh aren't you just adore Rachne was in the middle of saying when she had to quickly move to avoid the light. Phew, that was close, Rachne said once again holding Naruto between her upayas. Hey, did it just get even harder? Rachne asked to which Naruto's blush grew larger. It was here that Rachne quickly tied a thread around Naruto's mouth and let him go. Good, you didn't let go. You're such a good boy, Rachne said, getting a small glare from the blonde. It looks like our little nuisance has left the building, Rachne noted as the officer left the building. Listen up. Right now, you're suspended by this thread in your mouth, the arachne said as she poked his cheek. So I wouldn't let go of that thread. You are up pretty high. You know the woman pointed out. How the hell did I wind up like this? Naruto thought to himself. This is your punishment for being so naughty, Rachne said, exposing her upayas and placing them on his back. Hee hee, are they heavy? Rachne asked. To which Naruto mumbled out that's not the problem. My my, you're quite the trooper, aren't you? It's so cute seeing you hold back, Rachne said leaning in close to his face. But can you withstand this? The woman asked right before she started to nibble and lick his ear. What the hell? First she kidnaps me. Now she's assaulting me. Is she putting her tongue in my ear? Naruto thought right before biting through the thread. Shit. Oh wow, I can't believe you bit through my thread. I guess that isn't the only thing that's rock hard. Rachne said after she got down to where Naruto was suspended mire inches from the floor. Ha funny. Now could you remove the rest of the threads? Naruto asked. After Naruto was untied. Maybe I overdid it a little? I got carried away and played around with him. That's not like me at all, Rachne said and thought. Hey, Rachnara, what are you even doing anyway? You must have a reason for bringing me here. And aren't you supposed to be with your host family? Naruto asked. We didn't get along. They were expecting a softer kind of girl, if you know what I mean. The fake smiles they put on their faces were all sour, through and through. Then, that suspicious man came to them and offered to take me off their hands. Well, I'm sure they wanted to get rid of me, Rachne explained. Well, that sucks, Naruto said, after he finished sat there as Rachne slammed her leg into the ground next to him without flinching. I'm just letting you know. I'm not telling you this because I want your pity. I'm just fed up with humans, that's all. They tell lie after lie, only accepting people who are the same as they are. Humans are such hypocrites, she said looking down at him. And you're a hypocrite too, aren't you? The only reason your lower half is reacting that way is because of my human upper half. My lower half only elicits feelings of disgust, Rachne said. I wouldn't say that Naruto said it got her attention. Everyone has their own preferences, and I think your legs have a sort of charm to them, Naruto said, rubbing the back of his head out of embarrassment. You pervert, Rachne told him. What did you say? Naruto remarked blushing even more. You get turned on by spider legs? You really are a pervert, Rachne teased him. No, it's not like I'm getting turned on by the spider part. It's just Naruto tried to defend himself when Rachne interrupted him. What? Do you need to get laid that badly? Let me guess, you're a virgin? Rachne asked. That's not the point. Naruto said right before the warehouse was lit up by spotlights. We're completely surrounded. Naruto said as he and Rachne hid at opposite ends of a window. 
When exactly did he call for help? Was all this just a ruse to keep me in place? Rachni thought as she glared at the blonde. This extra species exchanged Smith. To you, the two heard from outside. You are guilty of committing a violent act against a male director. Despite the situation, your actions are inexcusable by law. Surrender yourself immediately. Otherwise, we will be forced to take action, Ms. Smith said over the speaker. What a selfish thing to do. How dare he use this situation to his advantage. I knew that humans couldn't be trusted. I'll have to use my hostage to dash Rachni was thinking until Naruto caught her attention. I know I broke the guy's nose yesterday, but that hardly calls for this. I mean even if I am in trouble, I don't think M. Owen is the one who should be arresting me. Is it because it involved extra species? The blonde said to himself. Hey, Rachni said, getting the blonde's attention. Don't you think that they're talking about me? Rachni asked him. No. Did you do something? The blonde asked, completely oblivious to what she did. Anyway, I'm going to distract them. So stay here and make a run for it when you get the chance, Naruto said, but got an unexpected reply when the girl burst out laughing. What the? Why are you laughing? Naruto exclaimed as the woman started holding her sides to laughter with Ms. Smith. I don't think it was necessary to bring all these people Karama commented as she stood next to Ms. Smith and mom who had looks of minor annoyance. I should start apologizing, Ms. Smith said as she pinched the bridge of her nose inside the warehouse, for both your host family's rejection of you and the care you received afterwards, or lack thereof Ms. Smith began only for Rachni to cut her off. I'm not really looking for an apology from you. It's true that I tied up that old man, and I did take this guy with me. Well it's nice that you are willing to overlook what Rachni said as she patted the blonde's head, much to his annoyance, but I think we have a little bit of a trust issue here. After all, don't you think that this was all caused by that initial awkward situation? Rachni asked. Trust you say? Ms. Smith asked. Yes, yes, for example. I've got nowhere to go right now, right? And the only place I can feasibly go is a place already remodeled specifically for extra species in mind. Because of that, I have to stay in a place where there are many extra species girls. Above all, I need a host family that harbors no ill feelings towards Arachne. Arachne finished resting her arm on Naruto's head. HM, I like this girl already Karama thought with a grin from the crate she was sitting on. I see, is that how it is? A remodeled place that would accept an exchange student. That really narrows it down, doesn't it? There's one place that fits your needs, Ms. Smith said as Rachni was now holding the blonde close to her. You know, when you told me that Honey was from a different world and we were going there today, I thought you were pulling my leg, Rachni said as she watched Naruto draw a large ceiling array. I suppose it is a bit difficult to believe what Karama said from her spot beside her. Yes, this is truly amazing, Syria said. Who cares about that? We got a new place to break in, Zambina said while in casual clothes, with her luggage next to her like the rest of Emma and that were there. What are you talking about? Mia asked the girl. We're coming with you, and there's no way we're staying at a hotel. So what do you think? Zambina pointed out. You're going to be living with Mia began to say before being interrupted. Are we late? Hikari asked running into the room with Midori and Naomi close behind. Nope, perfect timing. I just finished. Naruto said standing up to admire his work. That's good. We were afraid we wouldn't make it. Midori took forever to pack, even though we're only going to be visiting for a few days. Naomi told them. Hey, I wanted to make sure I was prepared, Midori argued. Okay, everyone enter the seal. This will only take a moment. Also since this is the first time for many of you, you might feel nauseous for a few minutes when we get there, the blonde said as he started making hand signs. Okay here we go, Naruto said slamming his hand to the seal, and in the blink of an eye, they were gone. Konoha, how long do you think they'll take? Shizun asked, as she, Sakura, Jiraiya, and Tsunade waited in the courtyard of Naruto's new house. They'd better not make me wait all day, Tsunade said, becoming irritated. All she wanted to do was inspect her surrogate brother slash son's potential wives, not die waiting for them. Fortunately she didn't have to wait much longer, for after a few more minutes a cloud of smoke announced their arrival. Konoha, I'm back, Naruto all but yelled as the smoke cleared. You weren't kidding about the nausea Mia said while holding her stomach. Poppy doesn't feel good Poppy said having similar problems, and sure enough most of the others shared their thoughts. I did warn you, the blonde said, rubbing the back of his head. Gaki, aren't you even going to say hello? Tsunade asked, getting the blonde's attention. Hey Bachan how have God Naruto was in the middle of greeting her when she slammed a fist into the top of his head. How many times do I have to tell you to stop calling me that? Tsunade said as Naruto rubbed the forming bump on his head. Ow ow ow, come on, you like it when I call you Bachan, admit it. Naruto said pointing at the Hokage while his other hand kept rubbing the injury. Just let it be, you're not going to win, Jiraiya informed him. So this is Tsunade? She doesn't seem that bad to about half of the girls. So you're the girl that wants to marry Naruto, huh? Tsunade asked, turning her attention to the girls that Naruto brought with him. At their nod she continued, Well then I hope you don't mind if I evaluate you, just to see if you deserve to. 
Sunada asked, waiting for them to nod again. Once they did she went on. Oh, and regardless of what I decide after this visit, if any of you do anything to hurt him Sunade paused to flick a boulder that was next to her, smashing it into a rumble with a smile. I'll personally guarantee you'll regret it. She is that bad. The girls thought with horrified expressions. Flashback. Since we have plenty of time, I thought we could go over something rather important. Karama announced to the room. What does thou mean? Siria asked. Well considering that most of you are potential brides for Naruto, I figured you'd want to have sex at some point, right? Karama asked, placing a box of condoms on the table, generating blushes of all shades of red. What are you saying all of a sudden? Sakura nearly yelled. Well I don't think the Hokage would be very sympathetic with Naruto if she found out Naruto got someone pregnant. I already had to intervene once Karama explained. So you did interrupt us on purpose. Mia yelled pointing at the fox. And just what did she interrupt? Syria asked glaring at the Lania. It's none of your concern, Mia told the centaur. It was back when she first tried to cook. She spent the day with Naruto and tried to get in his pants after he helped her shed Karama told everyone. They don't need to know I was shedding, Mia yelled, now completely embarrassed. Regardless of the reasoning, I think that now is the best time to go into this. There is a child present after all Syria said referring to Midori. It's okay. I already know about sex from Naomi. Midori informed the group, well then, there's no problem with continuing then. Sakura, why don't you help me out? Karama asked. Me? Why? Sakura asked. Well you are a medic right? You've no doubt have the knowledge to explain safe sex. Karama reasoned. Even so it's still embarrassing why is she drooling? Sakura asked with a raised eyebrow as she looked at Hikari. Hikari fantasy mode. Naruto. This is so embarrassing Hikari said as she held the sheet of the bed the two were sharing to her mouth. It being the only thing covering her as she lay before him. If it's too much my dear then we can stop. Waiting a lifetime to embrace you like this would only be a small obstetrical for our love, the blonde told her as he caressed her cheek, and gazed into her emerald orbs with his deep oceanic blue eyes, illuminated only by the light of the moon. No, I'd love nothing more than to be yours, body and soul in this moment Hikari spoke as she placed her hand over his. Please take me, she whispered to her love, and without further prompting, Naruto passionately locked lips with her as his hands roamed over her body. Hikari fantasy mode end. I think we lost her Midori said waving her hand in front of her mother's face. Okay, so we should use protection, I understand that. But this Hokage can't be that bad? Mia asked. If she found out that Naruto was having a kid, he'd be hospitalized at the very least Karama told them. Fine, I'll help you teach them. But only to avoid treating Naruto's injuries for if he was that stupid. Sakura gave in and started her explanation. And flashback. Now Tsunade, there's no reason to scare them like that. After all, we came here to relax and see the village, Miss Smith told her. I couldn't resist, it's not like I'll ever have this chance again Tsunade nonchalantly said. Anyway, as a Hokage, I welcome you to Konoha. Now are you going to just stand out here? Or are you going to come inside? Tsunade asked them. You all can do that. I'm going to see how the village has changed since I was last here Karama said as she walked towards the gate. But don't you need our dear sir to accompany you outside the house? Mero asked. Look around, we're not in Japan anymore. There's no rules saying that here they said as she walked past the gate. Is this the true Master Smith? Syria asked. Well the extra species only pertains to Japan. So yeah, she's right Ms. Smith said. Then if they don't mind, I would like to see the village master grew up and before discussing anything Syria directed her statement towards Tsunade. Sure, go ahead, I don't mind talking later. I've already taken the day off anyway. You all can go sightseeing to your heart's content, Tsunade told them. Oh Miss Sakura, could you give me a tour of the village? Mero asked her fellow Pinkett. Uh, sure, but why do you want me to show you? Sakura asked. It's just that, I want to hear more about your tragic love while seeing the village Mero told her, much to her dismay. Upon hearing this, it took all of Naruto's willpower to keep from bursting out in a fit of laughter. Is something funny? Sakura asked her fellow member of Team 7, while in the process of raising her fist. I'll wait. Sakura, I can explain. The blonde yelled as he prepared for the punch. However that punch never came due to Sakura being unable to go through with it after feeling Syria and Mia's killing intent. Gah never mind, let's go Mero, Sakura said pushing the mermaid along with a small twitch in her eye. Come on darling, I want you to show me around, Mia said dragging the blonde of the property. Now's my chance to have some alone time with MY darling was the thought going through her head as she did so. I'll be back later Sirius said walking out the gate shortly after Mia and Naruto. I think the rest of us should unpack first. It shouldn't take too long Naomi said taking her stuff inside, followed by most of the thoughts still there. Hey mom, me, Poppy, and Sue are going to explore the village okay? Midori said. Sure thing dear, just stay out of trouble Hikari told her, and with AI will the three left. I don't know what you were talking about Jiraiya. They all seem perfectly normal to me, Tsunade told her friend. 
Ha well see if you're still saying that after they have fun around the village was the white-haired sage's reply as he entered the house. Mia slowed down. I'll give you a tour so stop dragging me, Naruto told the red-haired girl. Oh sorry darling, I'm just so excited to see your home, Mia said after she stopped to let the blonde go. I know how you feel. It's been years since I've seen the village Naruto said as he started to reminisce about his past. What's even better is the fact that no one is around to get in the way of our love time. Mia thought as she watched her darling. And then you two sure were in a hurry Doppel said from behind the blonde. Huh. Oh Doppel you coming with us? The blonde asked the shapeshifter as he looked over his shoulder. I figured why not. So where are we going? Doppel asked. I was just thinking about that. Mia, is there anything you want to do? Are you okay? Naruto asked as he turned around to see the Lamia curled into a ball on the ground. W-H-Y-Y-Y-Y. Mia asked herself as she bit her shirt with tears streaming down her face like a waterfall. So you want to take us to a ramen stand? Shouldn't food wait until later in the tour? Doppel asked as she walked next to the blonde. Normally I'd agree with you, but Ichiraku ramen is the best in the world and I haven't eaten any since I left the village. Naruto told them with some drool coming out of his mouth just at the thought of Ichiraku ramen. You must really like their ramen. Oh I know. I'll ask them if they can teach me to make it. Then I can make it for you whenever you want. Mia excitedly suggested. It wouldn't hurt to ask what Naruto told her. And then thought to himself I have to remember to warn the others when we get back. Is that the place you were talking about? Doppel asked, pointing at the ramen stand. Yep that's it. Come on. I'll introduce you to I am and the old man. The blonde said running up the ramen stand. Hey old man, I am guess who's back. Naruto said as he pushed the blinds out of his way and entered. Naruto you're back. I am nearly yelled as she brought the blonde into a hug over the counter. You better tell me everything got it? I am told her blonde friend as she continued to embrace him. Aren't you too close Mia commented as she eyed the brunette. And who's this? One of the girls you're marrying? I am asked as she let go of the blonde to inspect the other girl. Yeah this is Mia. And this Naruto introduced the Lamia and then pointed to the shapeshifter now sitting next to him is Doppel. Well it's nice to meet you. I'm the ramen waitress who introduced herself. Figured you'd be stopping by on this visit of yours. So what would you three be having? Tuchi asked the group. I'll have a miso Naruto said followed by Mia. I'll have the same and finally Doppel might as well have what they have. Coming right up. Tuchi said as he started the pots going. So you're going to be a married man and Naruto? I'll be honest. I didn't think it would happen so soon. I hope we get an invention, the ramen chef told the group. Of course you and I am will be invited. I've known you guys since I was just a kid, the blonde told them. Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot about wedding plans. All the decorating, inventions will have to be sent out. Not to mention Mia started excitedly before Naruto cut her off. Mia calms down. The wedding doesn't need to be planned out right now. We should just focus on our relationship for now. So no need to start worrying about it, Naruto told her. Oh right. I guess it just surprised me that I never thought about what our wedding would be like, Mia said as a blush started forming on her cheeks. Crowded. I mean really. Considering how many girls you're going to marry and how important this is for the extra species exchange program. It's definitely going to be big, Doppel said after listening to them talk. Well you got that right. I nearly had a heart attack when we heard you got put in the CRA. You knew you were part of a powerful clan? Tuchi said as he placed their orders in front of them. Yeah I was completely surprised when I found out. Naruto said right before he started to eat. And you should have seen I am. I couldn't tell if she was happy for you or upset that she wasn't one of the girls we were hearing about. Tuchi told them. Father, don't say stuff like that. I am yelled as her whole face turned a bright red. Oh, is that so? Doppel asked with a mischievous spark in her eye. Right before turning it to I am and moving closer to the blonde. Oh Naruto please add me to your harem. I'd do anything for you. And why thing Doppel said as she pressed her body into his and whispered the last word into his ear but loud enough for the others to hear. This resulted in Naruto nearly choking on his ramen. Mia and I am screaming what are you doing? And Tuchi bursting out in laughter. Thanks for the ramen Naruto said as the group left. So where to now? Doppel asked as she walked with her hands behind her head. Well I was thinking we could Naruto started before hearing a familiar voice in the distance Poppy pulled up. Was that Kanoa Maru? Naruto asked no one in particular. After seeing the scarf-wearing boy and his blue-haired fiancé crash into the ground behind a few buildings. What is Poppy doing? Mia asked, trying to decide whether she should be surprised or not. Apparently she, along with the slime and fox girl, are helping Konoamaru's team catch Tora. Well that's what I've heard anyway a silver-haired man with one I covered casually said as he read his favorite orange book. Hey Kakashi-sensei. I'm still reading Erosenin's book, the blonde teen said to his old sensei. It's a good book. Anyway I thought I'd see how my student was doing. You must have quite the story to tell, with you getting engaged and all. I must say I'm surprised Kakashi said as she looked away from his book to his blonde student. Why is everyone so surprised that I'm getting married? Naruto complained, to which Mia agreed. Yeah why are people so surprised? Any girl would kill to have someone as wonderful as my darling. 
Well, Naruto was never that popular with girls, but looking past some of the problems most of them saw, I could see why you'd say that. Of course, it might also have to do with the circumstances behind how you met Kakashi, hinting at the fact that all of the girls he was going to marry were from a different world entirely. Mr. Mask here does have a point. If I hadn't met a blonde here personally, I would have called anyone who told me about all of this parallel world crap. A complete nut job, Dapple added. Oh right, guess I'm just so used to it that I forgot that it'd be weird, Naruto admitted. Yeah, now that you mention it, I've noticed more people staring than normal Mia said as she looked around them at the passerbys, some of which were blushing due to Dapple's choice in clothes, or lack of clothes. So what? It's not like people don't stare back in our world Dapple pointed out with her arms crossed. Most of the shinobi don't have a problem with you being here, so long as you don't try anything. So you don't have anything to worry about, Kakashi told them as he smiled. Really I thought they'd be more um, bothered by us being here. Since they treated Darling so badly over his connection to Karama Mia pointed out. That may be true for some, but most shinobi have seen their fair share of oddities. I myself have a few stories I could tell. As for Karama, you have to understand that she did pose a large threat to the village but it wasn't her fault. Mia interrupted. Sure she didn't always get along with them but she wasn't going to let her be faultlessly accused. True. But that's information we only got recently, after she stopped trying to kill Naruto for her freedom. And regardless of how you feel about it, many weren't able to separate Kurama from Naruto which resulted in many fearing him, Kakashi explained. But that's not right. Mia all but yelled. Mia, it's fine, Naruto said, putting his arm on her shoulder. I came out of it alright, didn't I? Naruto asked, trying to calm her down. Sorry to cut our conversation short, but I have some errands to take care of, and I don't want to be late. Kakashi said as he left in a whirlwind of leaves, hearing Naruto call him a liar right before disappearing, after showing Mia and Doppel around for a while. Wait, you're telling me that you painted the mountain, in proud daylight, while wearing bright orange? Doppel said before bursting out in a fit of laughter, after hearing the blonde's story. I agree with Doppel. That's hilarious, Mia said. I wish I had taken a picture before I had to wash it off, the blonde told them. What of these days you and I have to go on a prancing spree? Doppel told him as she whipped a tear from her eye due to laughing so hard. I can agree to that, Naruto told her. Naruto, three heard as their laughter died down. When they turned to the voice they saw two people, who if you didn't know better looked related, wearing green spandex with orange leg warmers, bowl haircuts, and thick eyebrows. Lee Gai Sensei, how are you doing? Naruto greeted as the two stopped in front of them. Splendid my boy, and before I forget I'd like to congratulate you on your engagement, Guy told him. Yes, it's truly wonderful that you have such a youthful spirit, Lee told his blonde friend. Yes. And speaking of youthful spirits, your girlfriend also has such youthful energy, Guy said. Thanks guys I appreciate waiting for a girlfriend, Naruto asked, a bit confused. They would be referring to me, master. Naruto heard Korea's voice, but didn't believe his eyes when he saw her as his mouth nearly hit the floor. Expressions that both Mia and Doppel shared. Without a doubt it was Serial standing there, but instead of her usual clothes the centaur wore the same green clothes as Lee and Guy albeit cut at the waist so that she could fit into it, with wrapping around her lower arms and waist, and similar leg warmers. Centauria what are you wearing? Mia asked, being the first to overcome her shock. HM? Oh yes, you are surprised by my appearance. Master Guy assures me that these clothes will increase thy growth during training. Wearing this outfit is of no concern if it means becoming strong enough to protect thy master, Syria said with conviction. Right. Already Centauria's strength has increased, Lee said. That's correct. Centauria has plenty of potential just waiting to be realized. I would ask you to join us, but we only have one lap left to finish and you seem preoccupied. Now let us continue, Guy said as he started running again followed by Lee. I shall see you shortly, Master, Korea said before taking off after them. Am I the only one who wants to know what her day was like? Or are you too curious too? Naruto slowly asked, receiving two silent nods for answers. I think it's time we headed back. What do you two think? Naruto asked as he turned to the two girls. I think you're right Mia said as she looked at how low the sun was in the sky. The trio was halfway back to the house when they heard Meryl call out to them. Miss Mia, Miss Doppel, dear sir are you heading home as well? The mermaid said as her fellow Pinkett pushed her forward, along with a dark-haired girl wearing a purple jacket trying to hide behind Sakura. Meryl Sakura, huh? Hey, is that you Hinata? The blonde asked. After Meryl whispered something to the Hyuga, Sakura pushed the girl up to the blonde. Miss Hinata has something she'd like to tell you Mero informed him. That so? Well I'm all ears. So tell me what you want to say, Naruto said with his usual big smile. Oh well you see, I since we first, what I'm trying to say is, I love, Hinata tried to say, the whole time becoming redder and redder due to embarrassment, until she finally fainted being caught by Sakura. Ah uh, Hinata, is she okay? Naruto was worried for the girl. She'll be fine, Sakura informed her blonde friend. Oh dear, 
It seems we'll have to work on that, Mero said. We're not far from the house, so I'll take her there to rest up, Sakura said as she placed the girl on her back, having Naruto push Mero. Naruto's house. I'm fine now. I can walk on my own. Hanada said as she got off of Sakura's back at the gate. Might as well come in since you're here Doppel said as she walked past everyone towards the house. She was shortly followed by everyone else, save Naruto. Darling aren't you coming in? Mia asked the blonde. I'll be in in a minute, the blonde told her. And with that the Lamia went inside with the others. You know you don't have to wait for me, right? Kurama asked, jumping down next to him from a nearby building. I know, I just felt like it, the blonde told the fox. So how was your day? Naruto asked, turning his gaze to her. Better than the last time I was in Kanoha, she told him. Now, are we going to just stand out here for the rest of the day, or are we going to join the others inside? Kurama asked, stopping at the gate as she looked over her shoulder at him. His response was to walk towards the house with her. Once inside they were greeted by all of the blonde's friends who were in the village. Naruto thought to himself, as he joined the party. So what are we going to do? Poppy asked as her, Sue, and Midori were walking down the street. Don't know, but I'm sure we'll find something. Midori told her friends. Just after the blonde said this a cat wearing a red bow ran between her legs. I wonder why it's in such a hurry. Midori asked. Look out. A boy wearing a long blue scarf yelled right before slamming into Midori. Akano Amaru, watch where you're going. A girl with oddly styled orange hair yelled at her friend, as she and another boy ran up to them. Sorry, I was watching the cat and Kano Amaru didn't trailing off after seeing the girl under him. Wow she's pretty. The scarf wearing boy thought with a small blush. Um, can we get up now? Midori asked, breaking him out of his trance. Of course. So sorry for running into you, Kano Amaru said quickly, getting up with a nervous laugh. Why were you chasing a cat? Poppy asked, drawing the kid's attention to her. We were chasing it for a mission, the boy with glasses said. Mission? Does that mean you're shinobi like dad? Midori asked excitedly. Who's your dad? The orange-haired girl asked. His name is Naruto. Do you know him? Midori answered and then asked. Naruto's your dad? All three asked after letting the information sink in. Yes husband is Midori's dad didn't you hear her? Poppy asked. Husband? Wait, does that mean the rumors are true? Naruto's getting married. The orange haired girl asked in excitement. That's right. Dad's going to marry a bunch of girls that like him. Midori answered. Um guys shouldn't we be chasing Tora? Unden asked his teammates. Ah, uh, the cat. Sorry guys. But we kinda have to bring Tora back to her owner. So we can't stay long. Kano Amaru said and was about to run off when Midori spoke up. We can help if you want, the blonde said. You can? Moegi asked. Of course. I have a good sense of smell. So I can track down the cat, Midori said. Really? That's assuming, Kano Amaru said. Well, what are we waiting for? If we take too long Ebisa sensei will get upset, Moegi said as the blonde started sniffing the area. This way, the blonde cheered after a moment and took off in that direction. And you're sure it went this way? Moegi asked as her. Undo. And Kano Amaru ran beside her with Poppy flying above them with Sue on her back. I've never doubted my nose before, Midori said as she continued down the street, swerving in and out of crowds. There it is, Kano Amaru yelled as he spotted the cat up ahead. Don't let it get away, Unden said as the chase started. Poppy, can you keep an eye on it? Moegi asked the harpy as they ran. Poppy can do that, the feathered girl said as she flew up to get a better view. Unden, cut it off and headed down that alley, Kano Amaru ordered. On it. The glasses-wearing boy said channeling chakra to his legs for a short sprint. Tora, seeing no other way around them, darted into the alley, leading to a dead end. Nowhere to run now, Kano Amaru told the cat as he, Moegi, Unden, and Midori crept up on the cat. See, I told you my nose would work, Midori told them, as Poppy flew down to hover over them. This, however, gave Tora an idea. The cat leaped onto a window seal, knocking a flower pot off then onto Poppy's head and up onto the roof. This causes the flower pot to land on Midori's face, and for Poppy and Sue to crash into the three shinobi. Midori repeated over and over as she rolled around while holding her nose, as the others struggled to free themselves from Sue. After everyone got out of Sue, there, that should do, Midori said as she finished putting the bandage on Midori's nose. Ah, uh, I can't smell a thing now, Midori complained as she lightly rubbed her nose. I bet that cat did it on purpose, Kano Amaru said, clearly angry that they were beaten by this cat. How are we supposed to catch Tora if she keeps finding a way to get around us? Unden asked. We can't just give up. What would Naruto think of us if we did? Kano Amaru asked his friends. You're right. Giving up isn't an option, but we still need to figure out a way to catch Tora Moegi told him. That cat is mean. Getting everyone stuck in Sue like that, Poppy exclaimed, as she helped Sue get a few things out of her that she picked up in the crash. That's it, Unden excitedly said. What do you mean? Midori asked the boy. Well, I was thinking, if we could get stuck in Sue so easily then we should use Sue's abilities to trap Tora in her. That way Tora won't be able to run off Unden explained his idea. That sounds great, Kanoamaru nearly yelled. Do you think Sue wants to catch the cat? 
Poppy asked the slime, who nodded in approval. Then it's settled. Now we just have to find Tora, Kanoamaru said, ten minutes later. Poppy, any sign of Tora? Moegi asked over the radio. Not yet. This place is pretty big. It might take Poppy some time before. There it is, Poppy was saying, until she saw the cat resting in a tree. Good. Stay there we'll come to you, Moegi told the harpy. Poppy's located in Tora. Let's move out, Moegi informed the others. I can't wait to catch that cat and get this mission over with. Kanoamaru said as the group made their way to Poppy. How did it spot us? Kanoamaru asked as they were once again in pursuit of Tora. I don't know. What I do know is that I don't want to lose it, Moegi said as she ran on top of a wall after Tora. I got you, Midori said, jumping onto the wall in front of Tora, only to have the cat slip through her legs as she tried to catch it. Look out, Moegi yelled, nearly hitting the fox girl. Unfortunately, the near collision caused Midori to lose her balance, so Moegi grabbed a hold of her only to be pulled down with her. Moegi and Midori are down, Undin told his scarf-wearing friend. They'll be fine. We gotta make sure we don't lose Tora, Kanoamaru told him. To both of the boys' relief, Poppy flew down to help corner Tora. No sudden moves Kanoamaru told them as he, Undin, and Poppy backed the cat into a corner. Sue now, Kanoamaru yelled, alerting the slime to strike as she jumped down from the roof onto the cat, much to Tora's surprise. All right, we got it. Kanoamaru cheered as he saw all but Tora's head and front right paw stuck inside Sue. Yeah, Sue did it. Poppy also cheered. No getting away this time Undin added. Unfortunately for them, this is where Tora noticed a water valve within arm's reach. As soon as Tora turned the valve a torrent of water came pouring out of the faucet directly behind Sue. Why us? Kanoamaru asked as he saw the water headed for them, which knocked him, Undin, and Poppy over, and allowed Tora to escape the now water-filled Sue. What happened? Moegi asked with a small twitch in her eye, as she and Midori came upon the now drenched group of people. I've had it with that cat. Kanoamaru yelled as he jumped to his feet. Poppy, can you carry me while you fly? Kanoamaru asked the girl. Of course Poppy can Poppy respond. What are you doing now? Moegi asked. If we can't catch Tora on the ground, then we'll take the battle to the sky. I'm going to have Poppy fly me around and then grab Tora when we spot it. Kanoamaru answered. Why do I get the feeling that's a bad idea? Moegi asked herself as she saw Poppy grab Kanoamaru's shoulders with her feet and start to lift the boy. You guys stay with Sue while she pulls herself together Kanoamaru said before Poppy took off with him. No way we're going to fail this time. Kanoamaru said as he and Poppy searched for Tora. Is this how your missions usually are? Poppy asked the boy. Nah, usually there's something boring, like painting a fence or walking dogs. We've even had to catch cats before, but this one is near impossible to catch. Kanoamaru answered. There it is, Poppy said, looking at the cat walking across a roof. Okay, time to finish this. Go straight for it Poppy, Kanoamaru told her, just before the bird girl dove for the cat. However, Tora noticed their shadow approaching and took off before they reached her. Damn, don't let it get away. Kanoamaru said. Right. Poppy replied as she took off after Tora as fast as she could. Poppy, despite being faster than Tora, couldn't reach the cat due to the animal weaving in and out of tight spaces. Eventually Tora made her way down to the street, hoping to use the crowd to her advantage. Poppy don't let it out of your sight, Kanoamaru told her as they flew just above the crowd. Tora, in an attempt to lose them, turned down an ally that led to a wooden fence with a small hole in it. Poppy, seeing this, simply shot upwards to avoid crashing nearly slamming her passenger into the wall. Careful Poppy, you nearly flattened me, the boy told her. Sorry, Poppy isn't used to flying super fast like this. The blue-haired girl apologized with some heavy breathing. I'll be back, I am said to her father, as she left the ramen stand with the takeout she was delivering. The lunch rush is all but over, so don't feel rushed to get back, Tuchi told his daughter. It was at this moment, that Tora ran past the ramen waitress. A cat? Wonder what it's doing I am asked herself. Then Poppy and Kanoamaru flew over her, whipping her hair around from the speed. Sorry about that I am. Kanoamaru apologized as the two sped off. Looks like Kanoamaru is having fun. And considering how the girl looked, I'd say she came here with what Naruto Tuchi said, having seen what happened. Yeah, he's going to have to introduce us to all of his girlfriends these days. Huh, where's my bandana? The brunette said, noticing her white bandana missing. Okay Poppy, just a little more. Huh, why are you going up? Kanoamaru asked, noticing they were above the buildings. Poppy can't see. Poppy told him, having somehow got her eyes covered by Ayam's bandana. Then slow down so we can remove it, the boy reasoned. Poppy will land then, the blue-haired girl said before heading for the ground. Seeing as the girl hadn't really slowed down at all Kanoamaru did the only thing he could in this situation, freak out. Poppy pull up, Kanoamaru yelled right before the two crashed. Oh wow Kyle Poppy you okay? Kanoamaru asked as the dust cloud cleared. Poppy is okay, mostly Poppy responded as she rubbed her head. Now that you two have that out of the way, 
Mind getting off of me a feminine voice said from under the boy. That voice, please tell me we did hit who I think we hit. Kanoa Maru thought to himself, before looking down to see exactly who he didn't want to. So, are you going to get off me or not? Hanabi Hyuga asked, clearly annoyed with the whole situation. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, Kanoa Maru said, quickly getting off the girl. What are you even doing? The Hyuga asked as she stood up. Well, you see, Kanoa Maru started. Think of how best to avoid pissing off the second in line for the head of the Hyuga clan. We're trying to catch a cat, Poppy told her. A cat? The brunette asked with a raised eyebrow. Yeah, but it keeps getting away, Midori said from behind them as her, and the others ran up to them. You failed to catch Tora, didn't you? Moegi asked, already knowing the answer. Hey, it's not my fault. Those dumb cats clearly did this before. Kanoa Maru defended. Why am I not surprised by this? Hanabi asked aloud. What was that? The scarf-wearing boy asked. What I mean is, despite being the grandson of Akage, you lack any real skills. The only you know, that isn't taught in the academy, is that ridiculous transformation that Naruto taught you before he left the brunette explained. I do too have skill, and Naruto's isn't ridiculous, Kanoa Maru argued. It wouldn't be so bad if you at least tried to learn some more. The no that Naruto created is at best a situational technique. Besides, you're from a prominent clan, so there's no reason for you to not learn more techniques Hanabi reasoned. Fine. If you're so confident that you're better, you tried to catch Tora. Kanoa Maru challenged the Hyuga. I guess I can take a few minutes out of my day to prove I'm right Hanabi said, accepting the challenge. Five minutes later. Told you it wasn't so easy, Kanoa Maru smugly said to Hyuga, who was lying in the middle of the street after Tora managed to set off a paper bomb near her. Shut. Up. The brunette said, clearly not wanting to hear it. There is no way that catching that cat is a genin level mission the Hyuga said. Pissed that the cat got the best of her. So what are we going to do now? Undan asked? Yeah, we tried catching Tora the usual way. We used Midori's sense of smell, Sue's ability to trap things in her slime, Poppy's fine to keep up with the cat, and now Hanabi's tried. At this rate, we'll never complete the mission, Moegi commented. After a few moments of thinking, Midori came up with an idea after noticing someone in the distance. I know just the person that can help us, Midori said as she started walking to said person. Really, who? Moegi asked the blonde. Come on, I'll introduce you, was Midori's response, some time later. You really think this will work? Undan asked, as he, Kanoa Maru, Moegi, Hanabi, and Midori were chasing Tora. Completely. I don't know anyone that's better at trapping people, Midori answered. I don't care how skilled this woman is. The sooner I see that cat loss, the sooner I'll be satisfied, Hanabi said, having taken this personally. Focus guys, the traps are coming up, Kanoa Maru said as the group maneuvered Tora down an alleyway. You think it worked? Moegi asked as she and everyone else stopped at the alley entrance. Of course it worked. I've been using my thread to capture prey since I was a little girl Rachni said as she walked out of the shadows holding a completely cocooned Tora, leaving only the cat's head not bound by a thread. Thanks Rachni, Midori said as she tackled the Arachne with a hug. No problem. Though I don't understand how you guys were having such a problem catching it. It was rather boring if you asked me Rachni said before walking over to Zambina, Anko, and Karina. Now if you excuse me, these two have offered to show me and Zambina around Rachni told them before their group started walking off. Now we can finally complete the mission, Undan said relieved, getting a universal agreement from the others. I'd like to spend more time with you, but we should get back home before my mom gets worried Midori informed them. Well it was nice meeting you Moegi said. Yeah, we'll have to hang out again Kanoamaru was saying when the blonde gave him a hug. Of course, I'm already looking forward to it, Midori said before letting go and heading back home with Poppy and Sue. What's with you? Hanabi asked Kanoamaru, who was blushing up a storm. Nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey we should get Tora to the tower before something happens, the boy nervously said, trying to change the subject and taking off for the tower. Whatever. It doesn't concern me Hanabi said as Moegi and Unin took off after their friend. Tis wonders to walk around without needing master with me every step Syria thought as she walked around the village. Not that our morning jogs are not enjoyable, especially since he can keep up with me. Syria thought to herself, as she watched the shinobi perform their task, quite easily in fact. I don't think Master has ever winded himself, even when I run at top speed Syria concluded. Come to think of it, Master is more agile, stronger, stamina I've never seen in anyone else, and has access to his chakra and jutsu Syria thought as she came to a stop with a somewhat worried look. The only thing I can do better than Master is wield a sword. How am I supposed to protect my Master if I am not even his equal? Syria freaked out, gaining weird looks from those around her. I must not give up. I simply need to increase my training and become his equal. Syria yelled, surprising those around her. This being a village based around training warriors, I cannot imagine a better place to start. The centaur told herself as she continued her stroll, looking for something to assist her training. Some time later, 
Perhaps a new sword will help. The one I have is but a practice sword, Sirius said as she stood in front of a weapons and wares shop. Once she entered the shop, thankful that the door was wide enough for her, she made her way over to the swords. Such quality. These are truly the blades that a warrior would be proud of, Syria thought to herself as she held the katana. They don't seem to have a large selection of broadswords, Syria commented, unaware of the man coming up behind her. I'm sorry, miss, but this shop is for shinobi, only the man said in a very deep, monotone voice. Quickly turning around, Syria saw a large man, taller than her, with short brown hair, piercing black eyes, and a scar starting from below his right eye and stopping at his collarbone. Oh, I did not know. Please forgive Cyril was saying when a brunette with her hair done in a Chinese-style set of buns came up to her. There you are. What did I tell you about wandering off when we got her? The brunette asked Cyril, then turned to the man. Sorry about that, she came here with me, the girl told him. After staring at the two of them for a moment, the man told them to ask him if they had any problems. Cyril let out a breath of relief, then turned to the brunette, and said, Thank you Miss Tenten, and don't mention it Tenten told her. Might I ask why you helped me? Cyril asked, figured you needed help. That and you're a friend of Naruto's Tenten informed her. You know my master? Siria asked. Never thought I'd hear someone call him master, but yeah. Now, do you need any help? I am a weapons expert Tenten offered. Would be very much appreciated. I am looking for a broadsword, but most of the blades in the store are lightweight swords like katana. Tis not that I cannot wield one, tis simply that I am used to a heavier sword. And how did you know I have a relationship with master? Siria started describing the kind of sword she was looking for when this little fact popped up in her mind. Come on, the moment people heard Naruto was getting married, was the moment everyone wanted as much info as the girl, or girls in this case. And I'd say you fit the rumors quite a bit, Tenten answered, motioning to Syria's lower half. Oh, right Syria said, now somewhat flustered, after finding a sword that fits Syria's needs. So, you want to get stronger so you can protect Naruto. Sounds like a good reason to increase your training, Tenten said as they left the store. Indeed, a centaur devotes their lives to serving their master, Syria proudly proclaimed. The only problem is that I do not believe I am good enough to serve my master, as I am now serious said becoming depressed. Don't say that. Naruto's not the type of guy to care about what Tenten said, trying to cheer the blonde up, but backfired. Maybe I worded that wrong Tenten thought. Well, if you want to increase your training, I could try to get Gai-sensei to train you Tenten offered. Gai-sensei? Siria asked. Yeah, he's the village's top taijutsu expert, the brunette said. If he can improve my training, then I will take on any challenge he can give me. Syria proclaimed with passion. Training ground. So you wish to undergo my training? Guy asked after listening to Tenten and Syria. Yes, if I can become strong enough to serve my master by training under you, then there's nothing I won't do, Syria said. Such youthful passion. Centoria, prepare yourself for the most rigorous training of your life. Guy told her as he gave her a thumbs up. She's one of Naruto's fiancés? Niji asked his fellow brunette. Yeah, she's a bit odd but who do we know that isn't Tenten answered, as Guy and Lee went on about the kind of training Syria would receive. Now, considering how your body is, we'll have to adjust the training accordingly, but first Guy said as he pulled out a spare green jumpsuit. I'll need you to put this on, Guy said, handing her the clothes. Does he just hand this out to anyone he trains? Tenten and Niji both thought, as they pictured the pair they had that were gathering dust in their closet. Tis not that I mean to be disrespectful. But why is it necessary to wear this? Syria asked as she skeptically looked at the clothes in her hands. Does it have to be green? The blonde wondered. Not to worry. Asking questions is perfectly fine. As for the answer, that's quite simple. It's the perfect training outfit. It allows the perfect amount of moment while moving and enough air to pass through to cool you off as you train. Guy informed her. No way she's going to fall for that Tenten and Niji thought. Such a fabric truly does sound, Syria said as she looked at the suit with amazement. She fell for it. The two thought in shock. That's the spirit, Lee told her. Yes, with such youthful passion I'm sure you'll go far, Guy told her. Do you have one that can fit me? Syria asked, pointing out the bottom half of the jumpsuit. How foolish of me, Guy said, seeing the problem. I got it, he said after a moment of thought. Taking out a kunai, Guy cut off the bottom part of the cloth. Brilliant Guy sensei Lee praised his sensei, after changing her clothes. This is a bit tight, but it will do, Syria said as she finished wrapping bandages around her arms. Excellent. Now, you said you use a sword and a bow most of the time? Guy asked. That would be correct, Syria told him. Wonderful. Let us start with archery then. Tenten. Guy said looking at the weapon's mistress. Right. Tenten said as she unraveled her scroll. Syria watched as the girl summoned forth a bow and arrows from the scroll. Here you go. Tenten said as she handed them to the centaur. Perfect. What will my target be? Syria asked the green-clad man. Your target will be Negi. Guy said pointing at the Hyuga prodigy. After a moment of silence, thou wants me to shoot at him? What about his safety? Syria yelled, understandably worried. That's only a concern if you can hit me. Hyuga told her, 
Are you saying I am a purse shot? Syria nearly yelled. What I'm saying is that you won't be able to hit me, Negi told her, as he sidestepped to avoid an arrow. Do not look down on a centaur's skills as a warrior, Syria told him as she readied another arrow. HM then proved me wrong, Negi said before jumping out of the path of her arrows. An hour later, he is quite good at avoiding my arrows Syria thought as she observed the pale-eyed teen. Is that all you can do? You have yet to even scratch me, Negi told her. Why you? Syria yelled as she sent another volley of arrows at him. She has great aim, Tenen said as she, Lee, and Guy watched them. Even with Negi provoking her, her aim hasn't been affected, Guy pointed out. I think they've been at it long enough. On to swordsmanship, Guy announced, not that Cyril and Niji heard. After telling Syria they were moving on to swords. This is an excellent opportunity to test my new sword Syria said as she gave the blade a few swings. Hope you know how to use that Tenten told her. Of course I know how to wield a sword, the centaur said to the brunette. Good, because I don't want you to get hurt. Too badly Tenten said as she quickly unraveled her scroll and sent a barrage of weapons at the blonde. I can see why they are considered weapons experts, Syria said after she deflected most of the weapons, only getting a few nicks. Thanks, and I'm impressed that you deflected my attack, Tenten informed her as she held her open scroll. Guess I don't need to hold back so much, Tenten thought as she waited for Syria to make her move. Syria, deciding to take action, used her broadsword to catch a cycle at her hooves and sent it back to Tenten. Seeing this, Tenten summoned a short sword to deflect it, only to have to block Syria's strike immediately after doing so. Definitely shouldn't hold back as much, Tenten thought as Syria quickly overpowered her and sent her sliding back with a large chip taken out of her sword. Thou may have the advantage of speed and agility. But it's clear that I surpass you in strength Syria said as she took her stance, holding her sword out towards Tenten. Note to self, avoid getting close to her. And next time, bring more weapons Tenten thought as she mentally kicked herself for bringing her smaller practice weapon scroll. One empty weapon scroll ladder. I have not had a spar so taxing in a long time, Syria happily said as she breathed heavier than usual, with a healthy layer of sweet covering her. Remind me again why you think you're not strong enough. Tenten said to the blonde as she nursed her cuts and bruises. Now that your spar is over, I think we should end today's training with a few laps around the village. Guy informed her. Yes, Master Guy, Syria said, thrilled that her strength will increase under the green-clad shinobi's training. You guys go ahead. I have to clean up my weapons, Tenten informed them, and I have things to attend to. So I'll be taking my leave, Negi said as he started walking off. Very well, since Centoria is new to our training, we'll lower our number of laps to 50. Let's go. Guy said as he took off with Lee and Syria following him. 50 laps sound reason 50 laps. How many do they normally run? Syria thought as she followed the two shinobi. 49 laps later. Almost finished Syria thought with relief as she hid her fatigue from Guy and Lee. Isn't that Naruto? Lee asked, getting the other two's attention. Yes, that would be master with Mia and Doppel Syria answered. Well then, let us greet our youthful friend. Guy said as he and Lee sped off towards the blonde. They were not even running at full speed. Syria screamed inside her head. Thanks guys I appreciate waiting for a girlfriend. Syria heard Naruto ask when she caught up. They would be referring to me, master. Syria informed him. Then to her surprise, Naruto, Mia, and Doppel just started staring at her. Why are they? Syria asked herself when Mia answered with her own question. Centoria what are you wearing? Mia asked her. HM? Oh yes, you are surprised by my appearance. Master Guy assures me that these clothes will increase thy growth during training. Wearing this outfit is of no concern if it means becoming strong enough to protect thy master, Syria explained. Right. Already Centoria's strength has increased, Lee said. That's correct. Centoria has plenty of potential just waiting to be realized. I would ask you to join us, but we only have one lap left to finish and you seem preoccupied. Now let us continue, Guy said as he started running again followed by Lee. I shall see you shortly, master, Korea said before taking off after them. So long as I have my master to protect. I shall not give up on becoming stronger. Korea thought with conviction as she made her way back to the house after parting with Guy and Lee. I am truly fortunate to have found someone like Master Guy to assist in my training. Now nothing will stop me from protecting Master Care though as she imagined herself and Naruto fighting side by side. Which quickly turned into her picturing them simply spending time together. Then going on a date. Getting married. Having kids. Before she shook the thoughts out of her head. To have such thoughts. It is not proper to think that way about my master. Korea scolded herself as she sported a massive blush. Stupid Naruto. Why'd he have to be such an idiot? Sakura mumbled to herself as she pushed Mero down the street. Miss Sakura, you seem to have a unique relationship, my dear Sir Mero mentioned. Ha huh, oh yes, well, it's somewhat complicated, Sakura told her. How so? The mermaid asked. If you want to know, then it started in the academy. Back then I couldn't stand him. With all the rumors about him and how he acted, 
I just assumed he was nothing more than a rule-breaking idiot, Sakura told Mero. Seeing her fellow Pinkett listening to her every word, she continued. It wasn't until we were put on the same team that I started to see the real Naruto. He's kind, strong, determined, and he has this way of inspiring those around him. Don't get me wrong, he's still an idiot. He's just the kind of idiot you can't help but like, Sakura finished. Do you love him? Mero asked, catching Sakura completely off guard. What? Why would you ask that out of nowhere? Sakura nearly yelled. Well, you just seem so fond of him, Mero answered. I guess you could say I'm fond of him, but I don't love him, got it? Sakura informed her. Oh, okay, Mero said. So where are we going first? Mero asked. I heard about this new dessert shop that opened up. You want to go check it out? Sakura asked. Sounds wonderful, Mero told her. Dessert shop. These cinnamon buns are delicious, Mero declared as she and Sakura left the store. They aren't, Sakura said. Sakura? The Pinkets heard a shy voice ask. Looking for the source, the two noticed a dark-haired girl with pale lavender eyes. Hinata here to get some sweat? Sakura asked the Hyuga. Yes, I wanted to see how the cinnamon buns were here. Hinata admitted. They're quite good. Here is one Mero offered. Thank you Hinata said as she took one. These are good Hinata said as she donned an expression of bliss. Hey Hinata, you want to help me show Mero around the village? Sakura asked, hoping to have someone for Mero to talk to, instead of asking about her love life. Sure. Is it for a mission? Hinata asked. No, I'm just giving her a tour because she asked me to. That. And I'm sure Naruto's already got his hands full giving his own tour Sakura told her. Oh, well that's nice of you Naruto. Hinata said when she registered her crush's name. Yeah. He's visiting with his fiancés I think would be the best word to use for them Sakura said. Not sure if Naruto's actually engaged to any of them. Um, Hinata are you okay? Sakura asked after she came out of her musings to a free Hinata. Naruto's in the village. I'm not prepared for this. How am I supposed to compete with his fiance? I'll never be with Naruto. Hinata screamed in her head, right before passing out. Hinata's mind. Ugh, what happened? Hinata asked herself, as she opened her eyes to find herself in the street. Hinata, that you? She heard a familiar voice ask. Ah, uh, Naruto, your Hinata was saying, only for her words to die in her throat when she turned around. What she saw nearly sent her into tears. There before her was the one she loved, surrounded by countless women clinging to him. Have you met my fiance yet? The blonde asked with that smile that would always brighten up her day, but now only increased her dread. Naruto dear, there's no reason to talk to her, one of the girls said. Yeah you have us, a second said. Why don't you get lost? A third told the Hyuga. Why? Hinata asked, trembling as tears started to fall. You heard me, wake up, she said with a smirk. Real world. Hinata woke up, Sakura said, just before the Hyuga shot up and slammed her forehead into the pinkets. Awawo Hinata said, rubbing her head. Thank goodness you're awake. We were worried about you, Mero said. Oh, um, sorry to worry you like that, Hinata apologized. Do you love dear sir? Mero asked the Hyuga, flooring both shinobi by the seeming out of nowhere question. Are you going to ask that to every girl that knows Naruto? Sakura yelled at the mermaid. You love dear sir too, don't you? Mero asked innocently. I told you I don't love him like that, Sakura told her. But you just said you still love him though, Mero said getting Sakura to go quiet as her eye began to twitch. This girl is going to drive me insane, Sakura yelled in her head. I do like Naruto, Hinata admitted as she pressed her fingers together. See, you don't need to go around asking what Sakura was saying when she paused to absorb what the Hyuga just said. Wait, you love Naruto too since when? Sakura asked the Hyuga. Since the academy? I've tried to tell him how I feel, but every time I tried, Hinata was saying, faint. When Mero finished her sentence, I guess that does explain something Sakura said. Oh, how tragic. To try and fail to confess your love to the one who holds it, only to see him taken by another. It's wonderful, Mero said going into tragic romance manic mode. Now's not the time for that, Sakura nearly yelled at the picket. Turning back to Hinata, Sakura found her curled up on the ground as tears formed in the corners of her eyes. It's true, how could I ever be with Naruto now, the Hyuga girl told them. What's stopping you, Mero asked getting both of the girls' attention. But he's getting married. How could I still be with him? Hinata asked her. There's no limit on how many girls dear sir can marry, right? The mermaid pointed out. After a moment of silence. You're right. There's still hope. I just need to tell Naruto that I love Hinata. Becoming beet red as steam came out of her head towards the end. She's going to need help both Pinkett's thought. Later next to a stream. You're going to help me confess to Naruto? Hinata asked in shock. It wouldn't be right if we didn't try to help in some way Mero said as she began to remove her dress. Thank you. But why are you taking your dress off? Hinata asked as she noticed the tail. As a mermaid I need to keep my gills wet or else I can't breathe. So I'm going to get in the water Mero said as she handed her clothes to Sakura now that she was in her swimsuit then jumped into the water. Now we just need to figure out how to help you, Sakura pondered. I know, why not have her practice with us? Mero suggested. Practice? Hinata asked with a faint blush. 
Yes, just pretend one of us are dear sir and confess Mero told her. Mero I'm not sure that will work. Saying that to one of us and saying it to Naruto are two completely different things Sakura said, then turned to see Hinata completely red trying to confess as Mero suggested. You've gotta be kidding me Sakura thought to herself. You can do it. Hinata Mero encouraged. Ah uh, yeah, what Mero said Sakura told her, feeling somewhat uneasy due to the awkward situation she was in. I love you. Hinata finally managed to say, even if she screamed, am I missing something? The three heard someone ask, turning to the person they saw Tio, Manako, and Ino. Ino, what are you doing? Sakura all but yelled. I think I should be the one asking what Ino said, right before Hinata fainted. We're helping Miss Hinata confess her love for dear Sir Mero told them without thinking. She has a crush on Sweetie. How cute. Tio gushed as she made sure the girl didn't hurt herself when she fainted. Hinata likes Naruto. Since when? Ino asked, just as surprised as Sakura was, the academy Sakura answered, figuring any kind of damage control would be hopeless. How could I, of all people, have missed it? It was so obvious that she liked him. Ino berated herself. Is she going to be okay? Manako asked, ignoring Ino's outburst. She'll be fine. Just give her a few minutes to wake up, Sakura told her. After Hinata woke up, you told Ino. Hinata nearly yelled at Mero. Sorry, I wasn't thinking the pink had apologized. Don't worry Hinata, I won't tell anyone. I may be the queen of gossip, but I wouldn't intentionally hurt someone with it, Ino assured her. Now then, how about I try to help you since Sakura clearly doesn't know what she's doing. Ino offered her help while getting on Sakura's nerves. Do you have an idea? Mero asked. Of course. The way I see it, Hinata just needs confidence. And what better way to get confidence fast than a makeover? Ino told them, as no one noticed Manako shiver when the blonde said makeover. Makeover? Hinata asked. Yep, me, Tio, and Manako have been shopping all day and you're more than welcome to join us, Ino told her. I don't know. I'm not really into fashion like you Hinata was saying when Ino grabbed her hand and started pulling her along. Come on, you'll never have the confidence to tell Naruto you like him if you can't even go shopping, Ino told her. We should go make sure Ino doesn't turn her into a dress-up doll Sakura told everyone. You have no idea how right you are, Manako told her. While she felt sorry for the Hida girl but relieved that Ino's attention wasn't on her anymore. Random clothes store. Come on Hinata. Show us how you look Ino told the girl as they waited outside the dressing room. Do I have to? Hinata asked. Don't worry, I'm sure you'll look cute Tio assured her. Never thought I'd see this Sakura thought to herself as Hinata came out sporting a huge blush. The outfit Ino gave her consisted of a black top only big enough to cover her upias and allowed a good portion of cleavage to be seen. The bottom was a lavender skirt with a black line that went down the right side and reached to just above her knees. Ino, we're trying to give her confidence not cause her to faint every time someone sees her, Sakura scolded her friend. In hindsight, I may have gone overboard when I picked them out, Ino admitted. Try this on, Tio said as she handed Hinata some clothes and pushed her into the changing room. One change of clothes later. It's better than Ino's pick, I guess Sakura thought as she looked at Hinata. Tio, I think it's too big for me, Hinata said as she tried not to trip over the long frilly dress Tio gave her to try on. Really? It didn't seem that big, Tio said. This isn't going to help Hinata Sakura thought to herself as Mero came over. How about this? Mero said as she held up a black and white two-piece swimsuit. That's even worse than Ino's pick, Sakura nearly yelled, ignoring Ino's protest. A few hours of trying on outfits, with Manako and Mero getting dragged into it with Hinata later. Ino, will you just admit that this isn't working? Sakura asked her. Fine. We'll just have to come up with a different solution Ino said. That'll have to wait till next time. I need to get Mero home before it gets too late. Sakura said as she walked up to Hinata and Mero. Come on, we're going back to the house Sakura informed them as she handed them their clothes. On the way to Naruto's. Don't worry Hinata. I'm sure we'll find a way to help you Sakura told her. Thanks, it means a lot, Hinata said. Why don't you try confessing? Mero suggested getting Sakura and Hinata to stop. You want to help Hinata confess to Naruto? By having Hinata confess to Naruto? Sakura asked. Not sure if she heard the mermaid right. Yes, all she has to do is say what she feels, and I'm sure dear sir will accept them. That and dear sir is just over there Mero said as she pointed towards Naruto, Mia, and Doppel. What are the chances of that? Sakura asked, as Mero called out to them. Miss Mia, Miss Doppel, dear sir are you heading home as well? The mermaid said. Seeing Naruto looking in their direction, Hinata quickly hid behind Sakura. This isn't going to end well Sakura thought. Mero Sakura, huh? Hey, is that you Hinata? Naruto asked once they caught up to them. It was here that Mero pulled the Hyuga down to whisper to her. Hinata you can do this. Just remember that dear sir won't reject you, Mero told her. Right, Hinata said though her body was shocked from being nervous. Guess I should help her Sakura thought before pushing Hinata towards the blonde. Miss Hinata has something she'd like to tell you Mero told Naruto. That's so? Well I'm all ears. So tell me what you want to say, Naruto said with his usual big smile. 
Oh, well you see, I, since we first, what I'm trying to say is, I love Hanada tried to say, the whole time becoming redder and redder due to embarrassment, until she finally fainted being caught by Sakura. No, it's Sakura thought. Hinata, is she okay? Naruto was worried for the girl. Physically, yes. Emotionally, we'll have to see Sakura thought. She'll be fine, Sakura informed her blonde friend. Oh dear, it seems we'll have to work on that, Mero said. We're not far from the house, so I'll take her there to rest up, Sakura said as she placed the girl on her back, having Naruto push Mero. I just hope this doesn't become a daily routine, Sakura thought to herself as she carried Hinata to Naruto's house. Guess this is where I'm sleeping, Zambina said to herself as she stood in front of the door, and then kicked it open. Man it's great breaking a new place in, the zombie said throwing her luggage on the bed. Unpacking done, but man could this place use some decorating. Guess that's part of being a new house I guess the woman said as she left the plane room. Guess I should see what kind of fun there is around here, Zambina thought as she walked out onto the street. Now where should I go for some fun, Zambina asked herself. Screw it. I'm sure I'll find something eventually, Zambina said, shrugging her shoulders and picking a random direction. Random street. Dango, a woman with purple hair and wearing a trench coat declared. Anko, you always say Dango. Don't you want to go eat something else? A woman with black wavy hair and crimson eyes asked Anko. Why would I want to eat something else? Dango is the best. You know that Karinai Anko told Kurani. Fine, lead the way Anko Karinai gave and knowing that it's pointless to argue with Anko over Dango. Alright, let's go. Anko said just before she turned a corner and slammed into Zambina. Hey, watch where you're going. Anko slash Zambina yelled. No, you watch where you're going. Anko slash Zambina yelled. Stop that. Anko slash Zambina yelled, getting irritated with each other. Great. Another Anko Kurinai thought as she watched the two glare at each other. Fine. Be that way. Anko said as she pulled out a kunai and put a small cut on Zambina's face. Hey, now I have to get this stitch up now. Zambina yelled. Shut up. It's not like you don't already have stitches on your face Enko said before she liked the blood off the kanai. Then immediately spit it out, gagging as her face turned green. What the hell? That's not blood. Enko said as she wiped off her tongue. What's wrong? Don't like the taste of formaldehyde? Zambina asked as she laughed at the trench coat wearing shinobi. Formaldehyde? Why would your blood have formaldehyde in it? Kurinai asked the zombie. I'm dead. So I needed to keep my body from rotting, Zambina told her. You're dead? Anko asked after she finished spitting out every drop of formaldehyde. I'm a zombie, and my name is Zambina, Zambina told them. Ha, name's Anko Midarashi, and this is Kurinai, Anko said as she pointed to Kurinai with her thumb. I take it you came here with what Anko said? Gaki? Zambina asked. She means Naruto Kurinai clarified. Oh, yeah, I came here with babe Zambina. As soon as Anko heard Zambina call Naruto babe, she burst out laughing. Babe, they must have gotten some good looks over the years for you to call him that. Anko said. Honey is rather attractive, Rakni said as she came out of an alley. How long were you there? Anko asked. Since the start. I had nothing to do, so I followed Zambina Rakni as she walked up to the three. Do all of you have a nickname for this? Anko asked. Yes, most of us do, Rakni said. So Miss Karina started as she looked at Raknara. Raknara. But everyone seems to call me Rakni, Rakni said. Right. Would you and Zambina like to come eat with me and Anko? Karina asked. As long as I'm not paying, Zambina cheered. Sure, why not, Rakni said. Then what are we waiting for? Dango for everyone, Anko said as she took off for a dango shop. Dango shop. You kidnapped him? Anko said after Rakni finished telling her and Anko about how she and Naruto met. Don't you think that was a bit extreme? Karina asked as she glanced at her laughing friend. Honey didn't seem to have a problem with it, Rakni said before taking a bite of her dango. Babe met Poppy when she took him. Maybe he just has a fetish for it, Zambina suggested. I could see them having some weird fetish like that, Anko said. Anko, Zambina, please. Try to control yourselves at least Kurinai pleaded. Well, if you don't want to talk about Naruto's love life, we can always talk about yours Anko said as she lightly elbowed Kurinai. I don't know what you're talking about. Kurinai feigned ignorance. Come on. I know you and Asuma have been hooking up Anko said. Drop it Anko Kurinai told the woman before drinking some of her tea. Is he good in bed? Anko asked Kurinai to spit out her tea. Anko. Kurinai nearly yelled. So, what about you Anko? Do you have a lover? Rakni asked as Zambina wiped off the tea Kurinai spit on her. Me? Are you kidding? The guys in this village are all too cowardly to ask me out. Anko mostly jokes. I mean, it's not like I want to go on a date every once in a while, right? Anko said letting a lot of irritation seep into her words. You sound like you need to get laid, Zambina asked, which got Kurinai to immediately glare at the zombie for saying it. Damn it, you don't think I've tried? I'm still a virgin for fuck's sake, Anko yelled. 
touchy subject? Rachni asked. It's a long story, Karina I said as she placed a hand on Anko's shoulder to calm her down. I don't know about losing your virginity, but I'm sure Babe would take you on a date if you asked him, Zambina suggested. Isn't it getting hitched? Anko asked with a skeptical expression. He keeps adding more girls to his little harem every time I look away. You might even convince Babe to fuck ya, though he's probably still a virgin. Surprising considering he hangs out with that pervert Zambina told her. He better still be a virgin. I told him I'd kick his ass if he got laid before me, Anko said. When did you say that? Karina asked her friend. Just before he left with Jiraiya, Anko answered, getting the three women to give her questioning looks. What? How would it look to me if I couldn't get rid of my V-card before him? Anko defended. You'll have to work fast then. I don't think Honey will be able to hold on to him for much longer. Rachni said before drinking her tea. I'm not worried. Even if he loses his before me, kicking the shit out of him will be fun Anko said before finishing off her dango. Just outside the dango shop. Well that was fun. What's next? Zambina asked as the group left the dango shop. Me and Karina I have nothing to do. Why don't we give you two a tour of the village? Anko suggested. Sounds good to me. Rachni said. Rachni, Rachni. The group heard a little girl call out before they were about to start the tour. Midori, what are you up to? Rachni asked as she watched Midori run up and hug her. Following her was Poppy, Sue, Konoamaru, Undin, Moegi, and a slightly blown up Hanabi. We need your help catching a cat, Midori excitedly said as she let go of the Arachne. A cat? Rachni asked as she placed a hand on her cheek. You guys got stuck with the Torah mission, huh? Looks like even the mighty Hyuga are no match for that fur ball. Enko started laughing as she saw the state the Genin was in. That cat is stronger than it seems Hanabi tried to defend herself as her clothes still had smoke coming off of them. Hey, Hinabi's right for once, Kanoamaru said, getting the Hyuga's eye to twitch at his words. We've tried everything to get that cat. Kanoamaru finished. Rachni can catch it right? Poppy happily asked. Of course I can. I'm an expert when it comes to catching prey, Rachni boasted. Then you'll help us? Moegi asked. Why not? Rachni said as she shrugged her shoulders. Wait, Anko said, getting everyone to look at her. What do you girls call Naruto? Enko asked as she looked at the non-human girls that just showed up. Husband, slash master, slash dad. Poppy, Sue, and Midori answered, That's not going to get old anytime soon, Enko said with a few laughs. You're going to ask all of the girls that, aren't you? Karina asked Enko with a small sigh. Da Enko answered, Random alleyway. This is a really high quality thread Karina commented on as she held some of Ragni's thread. What did you expect? I've been making it my whole life. The spider girl told the mistress. All these spider webs really make a creepy atmosphere. Maybe I can convince Ibiki to let her terrify one of the detainees for information Enko pondered to herself. Are you going to be done by the time those kids get Tora over here? Zambena asked as she watched Rachni prepare the trap. Don't worry. I'll finish in time Rachni said. Don't you think this is a little overboard for a cat? Karina asked as she looked at the alleyway that was now covered in spider thread. Better safe than sorry. If this Tora can escape from Sue. I'll need to make sure there's no way for it to get out of my threads. Done, Rachni said as she finished setting up her trap. Just as Rachni moved to the top of the alley to stay out of sight, Tora came running in. Tora, having seen Anko, Zambina, and Karinai, went to stop. However, Rachni pulled on some of her thread, making the cat trip over and spin into the threads. By the time Tora stopped she was already cocooned in thread. I was expecting something more challenging, Rachni said as she picked up the cat. You think it worked? Rachni heard Moigi ask. Of course it worked. I've been using my thread to capture prey since I was a little girl, Rachni said as she walked out of the alley with the caught Tora. Thanks, Rachni, Midori said as she tackled the Arachne with another hug. No problem. Though I don't understand how you guys were having such a problem catching it. It was rather boring if you asked me, Rachni said as she watched them turn their heads in embarrassment. Rachni then walked over to Zambina, Anko, and Karina. Now if you excuse me, these two have offered to show me and Zambina around Rachni told them before the four of them started walking off. Where should we take you girls first? Anko wondered aloud. How about a party at Naruto's? The group of girls heard a familiar voice ask. There's a party at Naruto's? Rachni asked as she turned to look at the old pervert as he leaned against a wall. Yeah, the mothers of Naruto's friends stopped by to see all of Naruto's fiancés, but the only one there was Hikari. Long story short, they came up with a plan to throw a party to celebrate him getting married and I have to go find people to invite Jiraiya. I think the Turk can wait till tomorrow, don't you? Anko asked. I'd rather rock this party right now, so I'm going, Zambina said. The village isn't going anywhere, Rachni said, getting Kurinai to nod in agreement. Then it's settled. We will party today and sightsee tomorrow. Besides, I have to remind them about our deal, Anko said, getting Zambina to laugh and Kurinai to shake her head at her friend. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic. Link is in the description. See you next time. Till then, sayonara.